evening, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic here on Rank Plays. It's been about a week since I last recorded. Played some Pazak with Toll Apcar here. Got a bunch of credits. We're up about 6,000 from when I last left off at uh, 35 now. I think we were at 29 before. Should be just enough to afford that armor we were salivating over in the last episode. Exarkun's light battle armor. So I guess we should probably head over there and buy that. Um, I suppose playing all that Pazak with Toll Apkar could kind of be representative of uh, us spending time in the cantina waiting for Yuthura Man to come by. Although it seems that she's not as much of a frequent flyer this place as Mac was led to believe. And uh, he's becoming impatient. I think he's going to want to get the ball moving on his own now. Greetings, and welcome to Zerka Corporation. Hello. Can I see what you have to offer? You certainly can. Allow me to punch up our stock. Fantastic. Yeah, he's been he's been sitting around for a long time, and uh, he's eager to get going. And he's gonna he's gonna try and find a way into that academy on his own. It could be it could be weeks before she decides to come out again. He doesn't know what Sith schedules are like, and if they even keep them in the first place. But uh, yeah, so Exar Kun's light battle suit, defense bonus of nine, and a max dexterity bonus of three. We're probably never gonna use this thing, but. Uh, Lemicus is fascinated with the Great Hyperspace War. Anything to do with the Sith and the Jedi from the Old Republic era, though. I mean, <laughs> we're, we're kind of in that era in the game. But uh, anything's ancient to the people of the time, right? So let's, uh, let's buy this. Yes, it's more than 750. That's fine. And we'll ch check it out and see what it looks like. Some of you may not like the brown, but I'm actually kind of partial to it, although I will say I'm not a huge fan of this sort of mustard yellow color on the gloves and on the neck. Um, I kind of like that. I think it would be something that Exar Kun would wear. Um, although, to make it even more authentic, we would have to equip this blue double-bladed lightsaber. Exar Kun, despite being Dark Lord of the Sith, continued to use the weapon he used when he was a Jedi Knight. Things weren't as uh, strict and uniform back then between the Jedi and the Sith, and they pretty much used whatever they felt like using. Um, the color system of red for Sith and blue, green, and yellow and purple for Jedi was not was not enforced. Not that it's even enforced now in in the timeline that we're currently inhabiting. Timeline, well, era that we're currently inhabiting, but. Um, it's certainly more common to see Sith in red, but back then it wasn't as wasn't as set in stone. You could pretty much do whatever you wanted, especially if you were a Sith. Uh, Jedi always kind of frowned on red lightsabers um, since really, really ancient times, but uh, the Sith did not care so much. Just that you were strong and followed their philosophy, that's all they really cared about. But anyway, pretty snazzy looking. Uh... Got the wrong hairdo for it, but I, I could pass as Exar Kun. Be a reincarnated Sith Lord on this planet. But I don't think we're going to be wearing this thing. As I said, I'm going to switch back to my Dark Jedi robes and my Cruciform lightsaber. Which I quite like. I think I like the blue variant better than the red. Well, maybe not. Like, I'm kind of 50-50. I like red lightsabers. But also, I like blue lightsabers. I'm so used to having one. And this is only a temporary disguise, after all. It's not like we're going to stay this way. Surely that wouldn't be the case. <laughs> I, I honestly don't know. I'm just sort of fooling around. But yeah, it's a cruciform lightsaber. Um, but the only thing that was introduced to... Star Wars from the new sequel trilogy that I've kind of that I kind of like is is this uh, Kylo Ren's model. I think uh, the modder that created this was Sith Spectre. I want to say I'm pretty sure that was his name. 
Um, great mod. Um, about the only thing I don't like about it is sort of the crackling animation to the texture on the blades. You can kind of see it there. I'll let it run for a second. See it flickering away. Not something that was native to the yes. game, as you can see with Jolie's, just a straight beam of light. I would have preferred it that way. There's an option to do that in the actual mod, but um, I couldn't get it to work for whatever reason, although I did do some tinkering to it myself. One of the things I changed about the mod, um, which was called uh, Crossguard Lightsabers, if you go and look it up on Google, was... Uh, I changed the name to Cruciform Lightsaber. Crossguard yes. descri describes what kind of guard um, a sword uses, and you wouldn't call a longsword a crossguard longsword because it's a longsword, so I didn't think it made sense. There was a better name for it, and that would be Cruciform because it's shaped like a cross. That's That describes even swords that are shaped like crosses in our world. Cruciform is the word we use for them to differentiate them from sabers, which Star Wars doesn't know how to use properly either, because a saber is um, a one-handed, single-edged sword, more or less, that can, is most often used in one hand. Um, it can be used in, in two hands. I guess there are such things as two-handed sabers. That would be like the katana is, is technically a two-handed saber. But, um... Yeah, it's lightsabers as far as they go. They're they're more like swords than sabers. Most often, Jedi tend to use them in two hands if it's just a a single-handed. Even even the single-handed sabers that we have here, it shows only being in in one hand. Yet when we use it, we're in two. Anyway, I've uh, I've waffled on for long enough about that. Just a little thing. I'm not gonna put solo mode on. Right now, we need to be heading back to the Evan Hawk. Or put that away. <laughs> Thank you. We have a quest, and uh, Mac is looking to recoup some of the losses after that expensive purchase of armor. Sweet home again. It's actually kind of convenient that we're here because uh, Telemachus would want to check in on Bastila and see how she's doing after she kind of walked out on him there. Just reassure her that no, he's not falling to the dark side. He promises. Just he had to try and protect her. Couldn't afford to blow their cover so soon, and she's going to have to come to terms with him doing things that he'd rather not do on this planet for the sake of the secrecy of their mission. It's just uh, it's something that's going to have to happen. She's going to have to accept it. And uh, I think after he makes it clear that he doesn't want that to be the case, I think she'll be good to come along with him again. I think he's going to take Karth too. Because these two have a lot of funny banter on Korriban. I kind of want to see it for myself. For now, let's head towards the cargo hold and uh, see if we can't find that spice. This is not the cargo hold, this is the garage. This is the cargo hold. And not those supplies. It's actually next to... our precious. <laughs> Let's open the compartment, though. The secret compartment is still locked. Enter the access code, red 47. The hidden compartment is now unlocked. Let's open it up. And we have Spice. Mandalorian Warrior Armor. Mandalorian Rally Master Armor. Mandalorian Field Marshal Armor. And an emergency boarding action protocol. I actually completely forgot about this mod. Um, this was something I added to the compartment as well. Not actually my mod, but just to put somebody else's mod into the game uh, in a sensible location. And uh, I wrote this 
onboarding action protocol, not to show too much of how the sausage is made, but we will we will see what it says, because even I don't remember anymore. Um, journal entry has been added. Let's see what that is first. Unfinished business. You have discovered a stash of spice inside the secret compartment on the Ebon Hawk. You will have to deliver it to Lurrs on Korriban if you want to get paid for it. Right. And the items that we got. Right, Mandalorian Field Marshal Armor. Well, that's not supposed to happen. It is duplicating <laughs> the, the armor requirement, but I suppose that doesn't really matter. I, I can fix that. It's no big deal. I probably mucked around with this this item and added that, thinking it wouldn't already be in place, but I think the heavy armor must have an inherent requirement to it. And the game knows to already stick it in, so I didn't even need to add it manually. But anyway, defense bonus of 14, max dexterity bonus of plus zero, 100% immunity versus sonic, electrical, fire, cold, acid, and poison. Saves all, plus five, regeneration of five. During the Mandalorian Wars, this armor was worn by Mandalorian field marshals, who were incredibly overpowered, because this is a very overpowered item. However... I did kind of make this as if it were an enviro suit, and that's my my reasoning behind it. This thing is supposed to be able to survive the vacuum of space, like Mandalorian armors are intended to be, and so it would need to have all of these things, immunity to cold and acid and fire, and anything that can happen to a person it needs to be resistant against. Um, it's really good. I'm not going to use it. Promise. It's just in the game so that we have something to look at that's kind of cool looking. And we have the Rally Master armor. R Rally Masters are kind of the the next down the totem pole in the Mandalorian hierarchy in their military. Um, field Marshals are like sort of generals, and then Rally Masters are captains or sergeants, something like that. It has the identical stats, uh, same description, except they were worn by Rally Masters. And then lastly, we have Warriors, the lowest of the low. Um, Candorus would have been a Rally Master. For, for comparison, and Cassus Fett would be a field marshal, one of the leaders. Anyway, uh, we will we'll take a look at those in a minute, but first, this emergency boarding action protocol. Hoodro, in the event that you were waylaid by some meddlesome party with the intent to board and search the vessel, you and the crew are to power down all systems and proceed directly to the cargo hold. Upon arrival, open the hidden compartment containing the shipment and don the suits of armor stowed within. From there, you and the crew will head to the airlock and exit the ship. With some luck, any short-range scanners will miss you while you're clinging to the hull. Return inside only once you are certain the boarding party has departed. Oh, and Hudro. Despite your inevitable haste and imbecilic disposition, please take care and remember to dispose of this file before leaving the ship so it doesn't fall into the wrong hands. It would be most unfortunate for you, should I find myself in debt to a client, wanted by yet another unknown organization, and in sudden need of a new pilot, all thanks to a misplaced datapad. Sincerely, Davik Kank. Well, we know who left this stuff here. And uh, last but not least, the spice. The term spice has come to describe a wide variety of stimulants mined on a number of worlds, but the highly coveted glitter stim found on Kessel is by far the most precious. Good. All of that and more is now ours. The container is empty, making it a perfect place to store... ...this. I... I might need this. I, I won't wear it, but... I need it. Oops. 
And he's going to take it. <laughs> because he... He needs it. It's, it's calling to him. Hopefully nobody... Nobody saw? No. Nope. Looks like he, uh... He got away with it. He took his precious. I, I'm not going to use this, I swear. But... But he has to have it on him. Very dangerous to carry it with him in this place, but... It's... It... He's, he's not thinking straight. <laughs> anyway, um... We got the spice. We did what we needed to do. We've, uh... We have no reason to be here anymore. Let us leave. Hmm. Alright. So who do we take? We're gonna take Bastila and we're gonna take Karth. Probably head out the doors now. I don't think there's anything else left for us in the facility itself, in Dredge Day, that is. Oh, yeah, Lurs. <laughs> of course. There you are. You have the spice human. Yes, I do. So you do. That does indeed look like the amount that Davik promised. Very well. One thousand credits is yours in exchange for the spice. Uh, I don't work for Davik, remember. I want more. I suppose we should count ourselves fortunate that you're here to deliver on Davik's promise at all. Fifteen hundred credits, human. No Here you are. You drive a hard bargain, human. Allow me to take the spice off your hands. My employers will be most pleased. Tell me, might you be interested in earning more credits? Credits, you say? You're speaking my language, sir. Maybe. Tell me more. It is a simple courier mission. Mata the Hut on Tatooine awaits a delivery of a box that I hold. The spice was his, and the box is his repayment. Okay. What's in the box? There is no danger involved, human, so long as you do not attempt to open the box yourself. <laughs> I'm sure Mata will pay you what was promised to Davik for the delivery. I believe 2,000 credits was the agreed upon sum. I'm sure we can work that up. Alright. Why don't you just bring it to him yourself? I suppose I would eventually have to, should you refuse. You are already here, however, and you have a ship. It is most convenient that to have you deliver the box. What happens if I open the box? Never open the box. Opening the box would be horribly bad. But what would happen? It isn't a bomb, is it? It is not a bomb. Just do not open it. That is all I can say. It represents no danger to you, as long as it remains closed. I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to be able to resist opening the box. You want to know what's in the box. But not now. Well, where, where can I find Mata? He was last on Tatooine. Has he moved? He can be found at Anchorhead, although I'm uncertain exactly where. He should not be difficult to spot. Fat as he is. <laughs> Alright. 
make it 3,000 and we have a deal. If you want more, you bargain with Mata, not me. He's the one you'll be working for on this mission. It's his box, after all. Very well. Bring it to him and you can haggle all you want over the price. Although I should warn you that Mata does not like to renegotiate. Yeah, well, I think we've, uh, we've haggled with him before, so... All right, I'll do it. Next I'm on Tatooine, I'll deliver it. Very good. I will have some of my workers load the box onto the Ebon Hawk for you. We'll be waiting for you there. Remember, do not open the box. What was that? Did you say open the box? Now I must go. My employers, thank you for your assistance. Excellent. Journal entry has been added. Credits received. 1500 experience points received, 500, and items lost. Uh, that journal entry was what? Unfinished business. Upon turning over the spice to Lurs, he offered you further employment. Take a strange box to Mata the Hut at the swoop track on, da on Tatooine. However, Lurs warned you not to open the box, though he was not clear on why or what might be inside. Uh, <laughs> I... I think I think I'm gonna be opening that box. I can almost guarantee it. But for now, the surface of Korriban awaits us. Monastery. We'll hold off on going there for now. Let's uh, let's pillage these crates first. Free loot is free loot. Even though we're not using droids in the party, you never know when we might need that. I would certainly have no qualms about stealing from the Sith. The utility droid here. A protocol I cannot droid. render assistance, citizen. Move along. Uh, you must be the same model of droid that they used on Terrace. Anyway. Metal boxes. Computer spike. Always welcome. We're gonna need a lot of those towards the end of the game. Get a load of that view. All low res as it is. Earth, stand aside. Figured I'd take in the atmosphere a bit, guys. Sorry if I'm not moving that fast. Just kind of a, a nostalgia bomb being back here after so long. Never did get a chance to uh, check out Bastila's disguise. Not too bad. Not too bad. To see how she is in combat with that red lightsaber. We may just have to keep her that way. The whole uh, the dark look really suits her. I mean, uh, that's the uh, that that that's the dark side talking. Forget I said anything. Well, we have Sith students up here. A bunch of different prospects. Sith Academy Guard and Miko. Well, I suppose we just go one by one. I have to stand at attention. Please, don't distract me, whoever you are. What are you doing? I... I'm trying to prove my worth to enter the Sith Academy here. We were told that if we stood here long enough, we would be worthy. That's madness. How long have you been here? We've been here for so many days. 
I'm so hungry. Some of us have died. But I must be strong. I must. I will keep standing. Who put you up to this? Miko. He's the Sith. The one watching us from there. He said this is how we I must be strong. Miko will find me worthy. Soon, I hope. You'll get your turn soon enough, fool. And when you do, I will be there, laughing as you collapse from heat exhaustion and Miko's beatings. Please, don't hurt me. I am too weak with hunger. Is there something specific you wanted? Are you Miko? And what if I am? You have to do something about those men. They're dying. That is the whole point. Personally, I think it's wonderful fun. Those fools actually think that if they stand there long enough, I'll let them become a Sith. Idiots. A Sith is not a bantha, all endurance and no brains. A Sith would fight for his life, no matter the odds. If these rot grubs are as stupid as they seem, then they deserve their fate. So this isn't a real test for them? Oh, it's a test, all right. It's a test to see if they're actually fool enough to die. If they don't, however, I certainly wouldn't admit them just for that accomplishment. Disgusting and barbaric. That these men chose to do this willingly astounds me to no end. Well, you should know better than anyone what some people will do for power, Bastila. And what is that supposed to mean? Well, just that the dark side is quite tempting. Or so you always say. What did you think I meant? Never mind what I thought. Just be quiet. Hmm. It is a bit boring standing out here all day, however. I think I'll go for some dinner. It will be fun to think of them while I gorge myself. They'll still be here in an hour or two, surely. I suggest you run along before I decide to make you part of the fun. Sith man, they uh, they are merciless. You, you were talking to Mikkel. I saw you. Where did he go? Did he, did he tell you I was worthy? Mikkel is tricking you. He'll never let you into the academy. What? I, I've wasted all this time. How could I have been so foolish? I could have died. I'll find another way in. I swear it. I'll show him. Thank you. Listen to your manipulations. I, I will make it into the academy. Just just a few hours longer. Just a few hours, surely. You talk to Meckle? Have I proved my worth? Did he say anything? He said you should go home. The Sith aren't for you. Go. Oh. <sighs> Some heavy shit. Uh, 
This guy in the middle always, like, makes the hair on the back of my neck stand up just the way he speaks. Like, just a couple more minutes. Just a few more minutes. A few more hours, surely. It's just... With the music playing in the background, it's, there's just something about it that... It's unsettling, you know? For, for a game that's rated T for teen, that's pretty dark. That he's just leaving these guys out here to die. But that's the Sith, you know? That's that's something that isn't necessarily clear until you hit Korriban, just how cruel the Sith can be. And uh, we're going to be seeing lots more of that. You are neither a Sith, nor do you bear the medallion of a student of this facility. Please, leave at once. How do I become a Sith, then? You must be admitted to the Academy. That decision must be made by a Sith who has already been accepted here. The final decision, however, remains with Master Yuthura. I believe she is currently at the Cantina, if you wish to seek her out. Now go. You are neither a Sith, nor do you bear the medallion of a student of this facility. Please, leave at once. Let's try something else. What's this medallion you mentioned? It is the device given to one who has been accepted into the Academy, but has not yet proved their worth as a student. If one of the Sith decides you are worthy, you will be given one. Which you must then take to Yathora Ban, who I believe is in the Cantina. It is she who decides which hopefuls enter the Academy. I need to get inside. I've been sent to speak with the Master of the Academy. No one gets inside, citizen. Messages and deliveries must be relayed through official Sith channels only. You will let me inside. I have been conditioned to resist mental persuasion, citizen. Shit. Please, do not attempt that <laughs> again. He should have shot us on the spot for doing that, but I suppose he gets this all the time. Lippy students coming, coming around, or hopefuls. So, can't shoot them all. It's bad for business. I'll be going then. On your way, citizen. Very well. Journal entry has been added. Enter the Sith Academy. You've heard that when a Sith accepts a hopeful as worthy, they are given a medallion, which must then be presented to Yathura Ban, the Sith Master decides which hopefuls enter the academy. She can sometimes be found in the colony's cantina. You should probably check to see if she has returned to the cantina. We shall do that now. Before we do, I think we'll quick save.